Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Tax Agenda, and we are now at chapter 9 of our Red Hat OpenShift Administration Tutorial. In this chapter, we are going to understand a very important concept of limiting the resources consumed by our application and its components. Its components might be the containers, ports, and the projects. We will also understand how we can apply the quotas and how to apply the limit ranges in this chapter. Okay, so let me go ahead and we will do the lab. And in the lab also, uh, we will execute the commands. And while executing commands, I will explain you the all scenarios why we why we need to limit these resources how a application can request the resources to the scheduler, okay? And what is the role of this scheduler port in terms of limiting the resources, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, these are all our commands, okay? We are going to execute while we will do this, okay? So we need to log in as a developer uh, user into our OC cluster. Okay, so it is our OC cluster. I am uh, um, um, uh, logged in as a developer uh, user, okay? And then I have created a uh, project here, okay? To deploy our application. So first step, what we are trying to do, okay? We will install a application and that application will uh, request some resources, okay? So uh, I will uh, I will explain each thing once we will go into that section of deployment and the deployment descriptor. Okay. So here, uh, what in by the while this running this command, while we are doing, we are running this command as a dry run. Okay. Here you can see the dry run hyper and hyper dry run. It means once we will run this command, it will not create any resources. Okay. While we are doing how to, we are trying to create a deployment. But uh, uh, it is the dry run and it will not create any resource. Just it will create the file, okay, YAML file for us. And then we will check this YAML file and can update this the YAML file according to our need. Okay, so let me do it. So our YAML file has been created. So here, hello limit is our YAML file. And let me go inside this YAML file first. Okay, so while we are talking about the resource limits and the resource request while we are creating the ports and scheduling these ports, okay, into the node, then these things will be applied either into the deployment or into the deployment, uh, into the deployment configurations, okay. So that's why here you can see the kind is deployment and then let me come down here in the specification section. Here you can see the resources, okay. So here we can set our request as well as the limits, okay. So what is different between the request and the limits? Let me see you here. And if you can see here this section, okay. This section in the resources, right. This section we are going to replace here with this resource section here in our deployment, okay. So what it means, he this resource is having two sections. One is request and other is the limits. So what is mean by the requests? Okay. So request means once my pod, okay, my pod is required that much of CPU and that much of memory. Okay. And uh, below this CPU and, me and memory, my application pair port cannot be run. Okay. That things I am specifying here in the specification section of the deployment. Okay. So what it means it means that once the scheduler will search for the node to to uh, to create your port there inside the node okay it will search that node accordingly the node which is having that much of cpu and that much of memory at least okay only then your port will be uh, would be scheduled into that node okay so that is this request and what is limits then limits means it is basically preventive action it is it is preventing your application pod to consume all the nodes resources okay so that's why we are preventing here we are limiting our pod here to do not use more than 200 m cpu and 100 uh, mi memory okay so this is the main concept of the resource and limits and how it will work okay let me go ahead and check one by one okay so first in our deployment let me try to give these values okay in the resource uh, uh, section okay so uh, let me edit the deployment yaml okay and 
here. We need to uh, take care of identification properly, okay? Otherwise, that file will not work, okay? So let me take care of the identification first. This resource will come here. CPU will come here. And memory will come here. Okay, fine. Let me save this. Okay, and let me try to run our application. Okay, how to run our application? We are going to apply this deployment YAML, okay, to the OpenShift. So this is our deployment and YAML file. Okay, we are applying here. Okay, now let me check with the OC get port commands. That part all ports has been created. Okay, he, we can see here now that this port is in the pending state. That by some means that port is not being running. Okay, let me try run again. And still our port is in the pending status okay so let me do some troubleshooting and that is the also a very very important part of your red hat 280 exam that every time you have to do some troubleshooting also if you are not getting the expected result okay so let me do some troubleshooting so for this troubleshooting we have to check the events okay what all events is happening behind the open set okay so let me do this we will get the uh, events with the warnings, okay? So let me see. Here we can say it's written a warning 28 seconds ago that insufficient CPU, okay? Now we understand that the what resource we require, okay? Uh, to run this pod in all the nodes that uh, or no nodes is having that much of uh, 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 CPU available to run our pods. Okay, that's why uh, scheduler is not able to um, uh, schedule our pod inside the nodes. That's why our pods are in the pending states here, right? You can see our uh, our pod is still in pending state. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to modify our request there. Okay, so let me go into the Vim again and then modify this section okay instead of three let me clearly specify let uh, let our uh, uh, cpu is required 1200 right 1200 m so let me give this value okay our requirement our port requirement is 1200 mc let me save it okay and let again try to apply this changes into our OC cluster. Okay, and let again check the OC get ports. Here we can see once we applied the changes, now our application pod is running fine. Okay, now let's check where uh, this is defined inside our uh, pod. Okay, for it we can give the OC describe command and then pod and then pod name, pod ID. Okay. Here we can see, right? You can see the request, right? CPU and uh, 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 memory, right? Here in this section, you can see. Okay, the request section. Fine. Okay, now let me go ahead and then try to uh, run. Uh, more replicas of the same application okay so let me scale our application by the oc scale command and now instead of one replica we are going to run at least four replica of our application so all four replicas all four node new four node four, all new uh, four pod will be created now and all uh, these new pod will be required at least 1200 m memory uh, cpu right so uh, scheduler will try to uh, uh, create these pod inside the node. Okay, now let's check the result. Okay, here we can see clearly for three node, okay, uh, the pod is created and running, but uh, for one um, uh, pod, okay, it is, it's, it is still in the pending state. Okay, let's try again. 
same result. Okay, our one pod is still in the pending state because all these three ports has been consumed all the cpu of our nodes okay we might be having different nodes here okay if we check the same command with the hyphen o uh, white command right we can see here clearly that first pod is created in master 01 second is master 03 uh, node had been created and third pod is created into the master 02 node okay and in my cluster environment i am having these three nodes only okay so once uh, for the uh, we for fourth pod it might be trying to create in any of the node but my application has consumed all the power of these uh, nodes. That's why uh, the next port is not able to be, uh, be created, okay? Not able to be scheduled. That's why this is still in the pending state, okay? So how to tackle this issue? To tackle this issue, what we have to do, okay? Let me, uh, we have to again, modify right and let this time modify our um, deployment again with the limits also okay and once we will do that okay let we define that our um, uh, our pod, our application do not require that much of uh, a CPU, okay? So let narrow down this to the 100 M and then let also apply the limit here as well, okay? So let me copy this limits part and let apply here. Again, proper identification is very, very much important, okay? So limit will come here, CPU will come here, and move very in a good place, okay? Let me also remove this extra line, and then save it, okay? So this time, we have applied the request, okay, as well as the limits here. And now we have created in the proper manner, right? So our app, so what we are defining here to the scheduler that my application require 100 uh, MCPU and uh, uh, 220 MI memory and uh, the limits, right? So uh, the upper limit of my application, if it will use the 200 M and the 100 memory, okay? So these things we have applied and let me apply these things into the cluster via the OC apply command. Okay, now we see again the OC get pods. Okay, one pod is running fine. Let me scale our application to up to four pods now again. So we are scaling our application and then let's try to get all the ports. Now you can see all ports are running fine. And if we see ports with hyphen O wide, right, you can see that uh, uh, two ports are running on the master 01 node. Okay, and uh, uh, two pods are running in, uh, uh, one pod is running on master 02 and one pod is master 03, right? So this is how our, uh, these um, limits and request will work, okay? So now let's talk about the quota, okay? How we can apply the quota on the project. So this thing was related to the uh, pod till now, okay? Now let me talk about the projects, how we can set the quotas on the projects, okay? So let me give you an example here, but for uh, working on the quota, you have to be login as the admin user, okay? So let me login as the admin user via OC login command. I'm logging as an admin. Okay, I am the admin user now. Okay, and then let me first create the quota. Okay. 
So what this command is doing, this command is creating the quota, OC create quota, and this is the quota name, project quota, okay? This is the name of quota. And then what we are doing, uh, we are creating quota for our project, okay? Schedule, schedule limit, okay? Schedule limit is the our project name, hyphen N, right? Minus, uh, minus N means, hyphen N means name space. Uh, project name okay and uh, for our project we are creating quota uh, cpu 3 memory 16 and we can have up to two config maps on okay so let me create this quota our quota has been created and let again uh, uh, login back as the developer user okay Okay, so I am uh, again as a developer uh, user, but now you know that we have created a quota. So let me check by creating one more config map. And we know that as per the quota, we can have only two config maps in our projects, okay? And if I will give command OC get config maps, okay? So I know that I already having two config maps already there in my projects, okay? So let me try to create one more config map and then we will see if uh, uh, we are allowed to create more config map or not, okay? So if I will try to create config map by OC create config map command, okay, here you can see it is giving me the error, okay? Because this is forbidden executing the quotas, exceeding the quota limits, right? So this is how we can set the quotas on our projects and we can create the request and the limits into our pods, containers, okay? Uh, so this is the very, very much important things while uh, you will work on the OpenShift clusters as an administrator and as well as for the exam to it. Thanks for watching this video.